good weekend so far. It is Saturday. That means we've got a House Divided campaign coming up. And it is the... Well, first we'll look at the sides. It is a Hatches Attack, 268 on the Server Pomp, 132 on the CSA versus 136 on the Union. I won't do a... F I might do a full intro. We'll see how far I can get. We are live now, though, so as the action happens, I'll kind of go into it. Now on the big board for the campaign, this is a continuation for last week. It is side swap, so the CSA team over here is actually the Union on the big board versus the other team, obviously, is swapped over. Now, this is in southern Virginia on the border with North Carolina, kind of in the center of the state. And it is 79th New York for the Union being attacked by the CSAA piece. Um, they are in danger. The New York piece is in danger of being wiped. Um, this is a continuation from that battle last week where we had a draw. Um, now, so and that will be the CSA team in game. If they are successful in holding, um, they will survive. But there are only 773 men left on this token, so if the uh, casualties are more than that, even if the Union wins, they will be wiped out. So we will see. So this is going to be a tough uh, tough match here for the uh, for the CSA team in-game versus the Union coming in. But let's take a look at the in-game Union team, and that is how I will refer to them. We have HL under Major Wilkes, who I believe is leading uh, TB Major Knight. IVB Jeff Knight, North West Virginia under Sigmar. Looks like uh, Sevy's in there as well for IVB. We've got HD under Coach, CJH from 20th New York, and PB under Legion. And I'm trying to see if there's anybody else. I don't see anybody else. If I did miss you, I do apologize. Um, but I think we're going to get the action right away here. On this side, oh, we do have the 42nd led by Kilroy and Mr. Hood. They are joined by Major Vilkine and the MWB. We also got Joker leading the 19th Indiana. New York led by Lieutenant Parker, the NYV. Then we've got SRL led by Tall Gray. Colonel Tommy leading the 9th Corps. Um, 83rd's in here somewhere. Where are you, 83rd? 79th led by Ricks, if I didn't mention them. I'm missing 83rd. So we got a standoff position. Is that 83rd all the way back here? Yep, here's 83rd. Okay. And they're being led by... Mr. Tank! Right, so... Yeah, we've got the uh, major UN... UN force. The major UN, union force. The UN, the United Nations, fighting in uh, Korea are attacking the uh, Chinese Communists here along the 38th parallel. We will see how this uh, mass charge uh, works here using uh, classic Maoist tactics of infiltration and mass attacks through infantry. Wait, what? Huh? What's happening? Oh, it's Civil War game. Oh, my bad. And we've got a massed attack here. As you can see, the Union is punching through. We'll see if the uh, CSA can counterattack. Here comes the NYV, the tip of the spear. They're going to come in and try to knock into the side of this Union team. And they are punching through. But will it be enough? Do they have additional help coming? Yes, they do. Here comes Colonel Tommy leading the 9th Corps. And Captain Tank leading the 83rd. And apparently um, some uh, men from uh, the Faroe Islands have arrived as well. I believe that is uh, where that individual is from who yelled out... Uh, And that was a successful counterattack by the Union, and I hope my game didn't crash. And it looks like it didn't. And the uh, Union, by the CSA team, Union Union on the Grand Campaign, but CSA. And as you can see, a very successful wipe there by that CSA team was able to react in time, you know, fighting against that bulwark that was the 42nd, and then all the other 
guys reacting in time to help and then hitting them with that flank attack first by NYV then by 9th Corps and and uh, 83rd and everybody else coming to their aid and it worked out quite well for that CSA team and we are only at 40 minutes here we are five minutes in and the Union is already more than halfway down from battle ready here we go and they haven't lost too many tickets now again uh, you know it's this the CSA team has a bit of a bit of a conundrum they have to not only win the match but they can't take more than 772 casualties in order to stay alive as the union gets reorganized um, this is the house divided campaign it happens every Saturday at uh, 8 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time there is a campaign board portion uh, you can see that in the uh, HDC playlist for each week if you want to see the uh, meta stuff that goes on before that. Um, right now the campaign is filled, but if you want to get on the waitlist, um, talk. there is a link in the description. Uh, you can sign up um, for the waitlist and uh, talk to Mr. Hood to see uh, when a spot, he's the campaign manager, um, for when a spot might open up if you are looking for a campaign to join at this time. Yes, unfortunately it's not open, but um, you never know when spots open up. You see, we got a 276 on the server, so really not much space at all. And it's kind of a down weekend, too, with the summertime. So, you know, the June month tends to be a little bit low uh, on the game in general. Well, here we got another attack by the Union team, led by Mr. Sebi from the IVB. Here we go. We got a couple scouts out here. Uh, Mr. Kil Kilroy, a little early warning system out on the left side. The Union's got its own scouts out. Now we've got 42nd reform. We'll see if this will be enough. Uh, is Velkine back? Same shots. I don't see Velkine back. No, there he is. Yep, Velkine's back. 19th of Deanna was in there as well. I don't think I mentioned them, but they were very pivotal to that old as well. And once more, I do like this by the Union. They don't just go in all, you know, straggly. They come up here, they form up a little bit off the point, get all together, get all messed up before they do a move. So very good work there by that Union team. We'll see if this time they are able to punch through and get behind the uh, 10th Corps and cut off the retreat uh, at Wonsan and trap um, the U.S. 10th Corps and the supporting South Korean units in coordination of Phase 2 of Mao's plan. Of his phase of the five, uh, well, it's not phase two, it's really campaign number two. Bonsai, that's not Chinese. Should be saying one sway. Here we go again. One sway, one sway, one, one sway. By the way, the Hurricane card is also still active from last week's battle, so that is why the rain is turned on. And it looks like it's hurting my graphics a little bit, but not really too bad, so I think we're fine here. Alright, so another attack here. God damn it, kill him. But it looks like the CSA has won again. I'm going to try to cap capture these guys as they retreat. Now, that looks like it did a little bit more damage to the uh, Union, the CSA team this time, so... Uh, let's see, Tommy's going to try to catch these couple out of lines here. It'll be, hey, take what you can get, man. And another successful hold by this Union team with that setup. And I don't even think they called in all their troops. You still had uh, a couple guys out here, Ricks and Targray, and a couple other guys out here watching the other side, but... Uh, Still a nice win there. Um, 136-141, so not really a uh, you know, five-man imbalance. is not bad. And there we go. But the CSA did make up a little bit of ground here. We're at 35 minutes, not quite here. Still battle ready uh, for both teams. Uh, we'll see. Got the CSA moving up again. Sebi trying to get the IVB stationed up here. A big piece of the pie right now for them is to maintain, again, 772. I'm sorry, 773. That is the objective for the CSA. Even if they can't win the match, if they can inflict that many casualties, they will win. And they will wipe out that token, I should say, even though they won't win the match. So, a bit of extra uh, thing going on there. Uh, 
Now, as Peng Doai is uh, reconsolidating, man, you know, he warned Mao not to carry out the fifth campaign. He thought the uh, supply lines were stretched a little bit too far, and even if they could cross the 38th parallel and only take uh, Seoul, it might be too much and they might be overextended. But Mao had thought that the U.S. Uh, was on the back foot and would not be able to uh, stand another attack. Um, there's also some historical dialogue talking about his desire to uh, increase aid, specifically uh, the development of his air force and potentially nuclear capability, and trying to use the war as a pretext for that. That is, Mr. Chen Jian is one of the uh, authors who argues that. Um, Sun Guangzhong also argues that a bit, but he also he, he argues it from a slightly different angle. But uh, the U.S. had another commander uh, in from the United Nations command. It was a, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Ridgway, or General Ridgway, I should say, uh, coming from the Airborne Forces. He had uh, he was actually enjoying the holidays um, after General so Walker. I believe it was General Walker. He had died in a plane crash, um, and he had taken command. Um, yeah, what's up, Sergeant? Just around Christmas hey, uh, or right after Christmas, I forget right. which it was. I do apologize on that and. Uh, was able to rally the uh, United Nations Command and get things stabilized and even push up and retake Seoul again. A very impressive feat of leadership on his part. Because uh, a lot of the UN forces at that time were, you know, the American-led UN forces were assuming that they would retreat uh, further south and get evacuated off the Korean Peninsula. But he uh, he rallied the forces. We'll see if Mr. Sevi can uh, repeat that feat. Oh, wow, frame rate is collapsing here. Why is that? Why are we collapsing frame rate? What's going on here? Might have been too much smoke going off with the rain particle effects. So I'm not sure. But uh, another successful hold here by this CSA team. And this one was extremely successful. And again, they have uh, come up a little bit more here. We are now at 32 minutes, 30, and the CSA is still at battle ready. Meanwhile, the Union has now kind of, that was a little bit less effective one, and they are now at uh, about halfway to engaged. And you see Tommy out here hunting for these five uh, tickets, and he'll get one right there. And those can add up very quickly, so I absolutely support little cleanup operations like that. Again, the uh, Union is doing a good job here of not uh, overcommitting to one side, but reacting in time. Now, after three attacks on the right, it looks like the uh, Union team is going to make an attempt on the left, and we will see if they have more luck on this side. And it is Mr. Major Wilkes here from the HL leading the charge forward here. Again, I, I've, been, I've thought these attacks by the CSA are not bad, but the defenses by the Union have been spot on. Got the Union, the CSA team. So we will see what happens next here. And we do have a bit of a spread out. They might be attempting to attack on a wide front here. Alright, what's going on with my frame? Playing this afternoon, I had no trouble. All 
All right, so here we go. Is this a juke? Is that what's going on here? Is this a juke? Trying to uh, bait the Union out to uh, the CSA out to another side here. Hit from a different angle. Kind of move up here and see. See if that juke worked. They're going to uh, try to still hit from this side and hit from a slightly different angle. We will see if it works here. And who is in the lead? It is Major Sebi from the IVB. The one thing I'm not so sure about is this is very strung out here. But we'll see if they can make it work. Here we go. Watch your left. Watch your left. Watch your and the CSA is flooding in. On this right side, is the Union, the CSA, going to be able to move down here and help them in time? 42nd MWB trying to hold on. Where is the rest of the Union team? Here they come. Here comes 83rd coming in to try to help. Where's the rest of the CSA? They're coming in, but are they taking too long to do so? This is taking a little bit longer for them to come down, and this is going to hurt them a bit. We'll see if it's enough to recover. They've got to carry this attack forward here. Here comes Colonel Tommy. I think it's going to be up to the, uh, well, you got the 9th Corps coming in from one angle, and you've got the NYV Parker from the other. They are going to have to finish off this Union force before they get consolidated. And it's going to be up to these two units to finish the job here. We'll see if they can do it. Hello? Hello? By the way, uh, Colonel Tommy says uh, he uh, enjoys everybody's um, well-being and wishes you all well. And Mr. Prattley wants to let you know he says hello. And you see the NYV coming in to finish the job along with 9th Corps. And they succeeded in doing so. I thought it was a little bit too late, but they made it in time. But we are now at... That did cost them quite a bit. We'll see if that cost them too much, that little bit of delay there. Again, it's not just about winning these engagements. It's about winning fast enough so you don't take too many losses and you stay below that 773 number. But right now the Union is uh, very close to uh, taking losses. The CSA has hit engaged and is not, you know, a bit of a ways down on it, too, at the 27-minute mark. So, you know, not uh, not perfect either. Um, so still some options for this Union team. We will see what they do next here. A little bit of a quiz for anybody in the comment section, the one section that wants to put it out there, if they know uh, what division uh, Matthew Bridgeway commanded uh, in World War II. Well, that's actually a bit of a trick question. Um, that's a bit of a trick question that I'm thinking about. We'll just say, who did Matthew Bridgeway command in World War II? say uh, after 1944 oh. we'll leave it at that 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 makes it a little bit easier to answer yeah general walker he would um when he, when he died he used to fly around in his plane especially um you know after november after the second second campaign the second offensive um, really kind of broke the back of the UN forces and, and the U and the UN US forces were in a pell mell retreat. It was it was it was a desperate retreat. Um you know, you you talk about attacking in another direction and that and that's fine. Um for some of the units. Some of the units were just trying to get the fuck out of there and not get completely wiped and some did get wiped. Um but 
he would fly around in a helicopter and visit, you know, to the units and give specific instruction. And I believe it was in a snowstorm where his his plane went down. I could be wrong on that. I might be misremembering it, but uh, I believe it was as he was going out trying to visit units that uh, his, his plane went down and Matthew Ridgway was called up. He was working at the Pentagon at the time. We were like, hey, off you go. You need to go and uh, rescue uh, these UN forces that were just uh, UN, uh, U.S. led UN forces that were getting destroyed. Or in danger of getting destroyed and keep South Korea from, uh, which at the time, well, still is called the Republic of Korea, but the ROC forces and U.S. forces, U.N. forces, going. Fighting Mr. Pong the Y. From the CPV, the Chinese People's Volunteers. Here comes Major Knight coming up. By the way, I'm filling up the space with random stuff because there's a lot of dead space in this map. So. I'm sorry if the uh, if the Korean War stuff gets old. Um, just fast forward until <laughs> you see more action. <laughs> but there's a lot of dead space in this map, so I'm trying to fill it. It's been a lot of time in Korea. Great, beautiful country. Wonderful country. Wonderful people. Great fucking food, too. All right, here we go. Now, they do have another element going on the opposite side here as kind of a separate element, so we'll see if that works better for this Union team. Uh, volley goes off, but I think it went off a little bit too soon, to be honest with you. I think they should have held it until they hit the fence. But we'll see. We'll see if it's enough. Say Shannon Walker. Now I'm questioning even that. Was it? No, it was Walker. Was, what's his face? Was a uh, 10th Corps commander. Oh fuck. He was MacArthur's chief of staff. Oh fuck. What was his name? That's gonna piss me off. All right. Now we do have some action on the other side. Looks like HL has attempted to come over here, but 9th Corps was under Colonel Time. was able to hold it, hold it, and it looks like he was successful. And the CSA is continuing to gain a lead here. And as you can see, Tommy, he does not like to let them retreat. He will spoil attack you and make sure he gets those extra tickets as he goes out. So always good awareness from Colonel Tommy and the 9th Corps. See here, poor Knight has no TB. He's going to look at them. Brave, brave man here. They can't kill him. Colonel Knight standing like a wooden fence. Therefore, you better get that pistol out, you motherfucker. Hey. And Captain Hood, a man without honor, shoots a man as he's looking through his glasses. But war is hell. See, this I'm not so sure about. So IVB Sevy's going to come out here. Trying to catch Prattley. See if you can get him. Oh, no, Prattley's going to get out of there. Again, it's a very straggly attack here. And we'll see if he can get up here. Oh, Sebi goes down for five tickets. These guys are just going to get nailed for very heavy ticket loss here. This is not a good charge. They were doing very well. This is not good. The Union team is kind of losing cohesion here a little bit. We'll see if it pays off, but... Um, I think they might be getting frustrated. A tough map for Union. It is not an easy map for Union at all. Yeah, there we go. Especially with the 10 second rule on. Um, oh my god, you just did like a fucking mixed twist. And so, yes, to, to Wilkes here. This is a map where I would say you you have a point where this is a very, very tough map with the 10 second rule and the um, and the uh, 20 second additional tickets. This is, this is an example of where this is very tough. And, and the... If you want to rest your case on an example, this this is this is a good example of it. Now 
we do have another element going on the other side. That might be TB. Now we'll see. The, U the CSA is getting a little adventurous out here. We'll see. Uh, here comes Hood. He's got a lot of men in front of him. He might get caught out here. We'll see if this works. I think this might be a little bit risky. He got a good shot off, but how many men is he going to lose? Again, 7-7-3. It's not just about winning the match. It's about how many casualties you take. And, and frankly, I think you took a lot right there. I, that, that was not a good move, in my opinion, by Mr. Hood. A shameful display, one, one might say. Okay, we got uh, Mr. Sigmar here and the 4th West Virginia trying to draw off the MWB. Oh, well, we got a major push on the other side here, so... Oh, no, we don't. We'll keep an eye on 4th West Virginia here for a moment. Oh, nope, they're going to fall back into the, uh, the corner a little bit. We're at 19 minutes. CSA just about halfway on engaged. And now it's a shootout here with the Union. This, again, might work in the favor of the Union team. Again, if they're going for the 773 number. They might be just going for an attrition fight. Here comes Knight. They are getting hit hard here by the CSA team. Oh, that volley was tough, man. Holy shit. That was probably a 40 second volley. That might have been a 19 did the NR NYV volley. Either one, whoever did it, that was a nice volley. You all know who you were. And we got HD coming out here trying to get some fire, but to be honest with you, this is a dangerous position. You can get hit in crossfire pretty easily here. You might think you have cover, but if you get hit from this side over here, we'll see. Right now, there's still a decent amount over here, 42nd, and then WB. Not really engaged. This might actually, again, work out to the uh, Union's benefit here. Not so much for this match, but for the overall play. Oh, you can see poor uh, TB got hit hard here. Legion trying to get the PB up a little bit. I don't know if I called up Legion earlier, but yes, he's in here as well. Again, I'm focusing more on this angle uh, because it's a the woods I can ever fucking see in. So I, I have been watching from the Union side a lot here. I hope you guys don't mind too much, but I think it's just a bit easier to see. To call the map. Yeah, this Union team's doing some damage now. It's doing some damage. Yeah, because you got these guys over here not really engaged. They've been drawn off. Check your loads. So we got 42nd over here. I think they're going to be uh, needed to help turn this tide. Or Again, I don't think this line will collapse, but um, casualties are going to start adding up from that perspective. So apparently they're having some trouble with the flag. I guess it's having a bit of a glitch, which can be extraordinarily frustrating. You could be standing right next to him, and you're like, "What the hell? I'm in, I'm in, I'm in position, and for whatever reason, it won't register it." <laughs> so I definitely feel Mr. Snapperkin's pain there. All right, here comes 42nd. This is where we might see some changing. Looks like there was a charge up here. I missed. Ninth Ward came out and looks like Joker supported them. Uh, doing a little bit of an engagement up there. Uh, right now, the uh, CSA team has about a full morale state ahead. We're at 16 minutes and they are still at engaged. A very tough match for this Union team. We are dead even on 144. 288 again. Goes back to why I mentioned we can't have additional people in right now. We're kind of full. But, um, again, get on the wait list. And uh, you never know. People people have to leave. Units can't stay for whatever reason. And we might be able to you know, slip you in. Just uh, It's a very tough map for the Union attacker. Very tough. But again, the strategy might be, hey, we just need to get 773. That might be it. Oh, here comes Hood again. We'll see if this works out a little bit better this time. 
trying to chase off Northwest Virginia. Again, he's out here, though. He can't stay, I would say. Or else if the Union sees him on this side, they can nail him. This is very dangerous. Watch left as well. Big tree, south, south, west. Oh, no, we're ready to move. To the right. And Hood is going to move up here. Joe Boy's to the right. Punch him. Reloaded, to the right. Try to punch reloaded, him in the face. The now, his thought process may be to try to knock him down. Uh, before the casualties get too high. I'm not sure if that's going to work here. Oh, I would not reload out here. We'll see if this works, but... Yes, yeah, you gotta get out of there. Get that fly, get that fly. Again, I don't think the juice was worth the squeeze on it, to be honest with you. We'll see. Again, I'm not fine. Because they're not gonna find his dad and they're not gonna let us fucking shoot him like that. Almond was a commander for 10th Corps, who was uh, from MacArthur's chief of staff. Then Willoughby was his G2. See, one of my friends who's in the security studies program with me is writing a uh, writing his dissertation on the uh, politicization of politicalization of uh, intelligence under Willoughby's uh, G2 section. He's an intel officer uh, by trade. Currently in the National Guard. I forget which state. Which state is he in? I think he's in Oklahoma. It's raining. I gotta ask him what state he's in right now. Fuck. I can't remember. Uh, Union is now at breaking. CSA is still engaged, but close to taking losses. 13 minutes 20 left on the clock. Again, all you gotta do is get the 773 here for the Union team. That's what I would have in mind right now. It's okay if you lose this match. You'll still succeed if you can kill enough. You might have to retreat a bit, but that might not be a bad thing either. Ooh, another tough volley. I think that was 9th Corps? Might have been NYV. Or 19th. A lot of good units there, so it's it's tough, you know, unless I'm focused on them, it's tough to tell. But again, it's a little easier watching from this side right now, so... You guys know who you did the volley. The guys that did it. I really like the uh, Union at the moment. They have very distinct lines, very disciplined fire. You've got kind of this rotating unit out here with 42nd. I know been very tough on Hood, but it, I, I think it's a very good maneuvering force to keep the Union on its toes. I just think he's staying there too long. I think it's pop volley and get out of there. Um, I don't think the second volley is worth it, but, you know, maybe I'm wrong on that. All right, now we got a maneuver here by Wilkes. He might be trying to catch Hood over here and get some more kills. We'll see if he can do it. Here we go. Yeah, getting in the corn is an excellent idea, I think, right now for Wilkes and kind of turn into it. If he can, and make it a knife fight in the corn. He's going to turn and fire on him. Interesting. Uh, he's going to retreat up the hill. Interesting. Um, maybe just try to drag Hood on a wild goose chase, maybe? Um, I mean, he might run into MWB down here. Ooh, MWB looking good, man. A lot of guys today. Good job, MWB, Velkin. Always love seeing those guys get a lot of people in there. I've actually known a lot of the MWB guys for quite a long time. Like, uh... Like Issel. Issel Dragon. I don't see him play in this event, but, uh... Hey, we're getting shot from our right! Up there in the corner! The corner! Stop shooting us, assholes! I know Hood has kind of gone into him. 
There we go. Union has now hit taking losses. All right, there we go. They are wiped out. Union is now at uh, breaking. And we have an attack, though. That might have been a distraction by Wilkes with this main attack now going off. We'll see if this succeeds. It might. I'm not, I'm not quite sure why guys are jumping the fence instead of going through the uh, the gap in the f in the wall in the uh, fence there. Oh, but Parker's coming in to reinforce. We'll see if it's enough. Give him the tip. Yes, I believe the um, the Faroe Islands should have um, autonomy within the uh, British Empire. Well, the uh, United Kingdom, I should say. I agree with that sentiment. The Falcons, though, no. No fucking way. Now, Jersey, I, I don't I don't know why a self-respecting Englishman would live that close to the uh, French coast, but, uh, you know, each his own, I suppose. Another successful hold there by the, the uh, CSA team. And the Union is now very close to final push. they got nine minutes left on the clock, so they've got enough time now to kind of reconsolidate and figure out what they want to do. But really, they've only got time for one more attack before they go into final push. So whatever they do, this is pretty much their last move. Um, and they got a lot of morale state to beat. But again, 7-7-3 is the goal. So I, I would recommend at the moment, slow the clock down, drag out the fight, do some long-distance shooting, uh, keep your men in formation, and uh, try to, again, try to get to that magic number. Charging, you're not going to kill a full morale state and take point, I don't think. Um, so, again, I think your only option now is the 773. We'll see. We'll see what they do. Looks like they're having some Steam Chat issues as well, which is unfortunate. You know? Yay, we're going to get the flashback and totally not die. Uh, I mean, it's good to have dreams. <laughs> See if Dancing can do it. I believe in you, Dancing. I believe in you, Dancing. Oh! Got nailed by Nolan. Oh, um, but IVB got out. All right, here we go. So they are going for a full attack here, basically on point. We will see if this works. This this may, well, at the very least, it might get them the casualties they need. We'll see. Again, I don't think it's the option I would have gone for, but I don't think it's a horrible idea either. Oh, fuck you, frame rate. Why are you doing this to me? Chasing. You gotta turn in, Tommy. You gotta turn in. You gotta help. You don't wanna lose point. Alright, see us. Union's now on final push. Again, it's not just killing the enemy, it's making sure you don't hit that 773. And the more that they, uh, you don't, the, the longer you let them stay in the fight, the more they're gonna be able to kill. That guy's a Union guy. Watch out, 
Into the field. Are we here? All right, we are now at three minutes on the final push. Get to see the Union trying to uh, mass up. We'll see if they can manage it. Pretty much only got time to go straight to point now, although they might be able to get their loads in. I think they have enough time for that. I got, I got. So at two, they're charging. So they got 30 seconds to form up and uh, mass. Try to get their bayonets. Try to get their loads and get ready to go. We will see what the Union can do. Let's see, see what they can do. Now they are moving out to uh, meet them here, and I definitely agree with this move here by Mr. Hood. There's no point in fighting back. Kill them up here. Disrupt them. Get them to move a little bit early. I also agree with this, volley and fall back. This will get these guys to waste their shots up here. And then you can trust your battle buddies and your friends to kind of turn around and be the second line of defense here. Again, fight them off a point, which is very good. For the Union, you just want to get stuck in as deep as you can. Got him on breaking again. I'll be curious to see these casualties. Something they got to keep in mind here. I think they're I think they're losing the thread here a bit. With these guys kind of wandering out here in these one-on-one -on -one fights, you can't have these one-on-one -on -one fights. You need to wipe them out in nice thick lines like this, so you're not really losing too many men. One sway, one sway, one one sway. Kang Mei, Yuan Chao, Bao Jia, Wei Guo. We will fight American imperialism, defend Korea, or aid Korea, I should say, aid Korea. Um, protect the family, Bao Jia, and Wei Guo, defend the, home, the homeland. That is the uh, Chinese name for the Korean War. Or the title for it. And we do have a victory here for the CSA in-game Union team. Um, a pretty uh, very well done um, matches attack by them, but not a poor performance by the Union team either. Um, so I don't really have too much bad to say. I don't really have to. I, I thought it was a pretty good attack. It's a, it's a very tough map, especially when they play it well. And the CSA in-game team played it very well. Uh, but now we'll see the big question here: Are we under 773 or not? And this is for the CSA, for total casualties. Mm, let's see here. They get the end. Let's see. We got a little bit. They are wiped. 800. 800, you're wiped by 27 men. You just have to be a little bit more disciplined, and you would have had it. Um, so, at the end of the day, even though uh, the Union team lost in-game, the CSA campaign actually did succeed in wiping out that token. So, discipline. Know what you're doing. Think strategically. Don't just be like, I want to win this fight.